Hey, this is Melanie with Hook to the Left, and today we're going to take a look at this book, A Modern Guide to Textured Crochet. So let's go ahead and get it open. Hi, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming to check out my next video. And if you're new here, well, welcome. Welcome to my little group here on the internet. And if you like all things crochet and yarn, then go down below and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you're reminded, I reminded when I come out with a brand new video. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this book. It is A Modern Guide to Textured Crochet, a collection of wonderfully tactile stitches. And you can see that here. Isn't that gorgeous? And this is by Lee Sart Sartori. It is a paperback book, but it's a large paperback book, and you can find this book on Amazon for, at this time, it's being sold, and that is, I'm making this video in um, September of 2022, and you can get this on paperback for $13.60. I will link it down below. It will be an affiliate link. But it will definitely be linked down below if you are interested in purchasing this book. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this puppy up and take a look and see what's inside, okay? And, and as you saw from the binding, it's not a super thick book, but that's because the focus is primarily on the textured stitches and um, not all the stitches, which I have a book. I'm going to link it up above, up here. Um, to to another review that I did um, for a stitch Bible that I really really love I can't recommend it enough um, but if you're interested in starting to create your own projects the stitch Bible is great because it helps you understand how to pull things together to create you know to create different stitches and textures and stuff like that so anyway let's go ahead and open this puppy up all right, so here at the front, in the front sleeve right here, it tells you um, the sections that this book is in. So it's in the seasonal sections. You've got spring, summer, fall, and winter. And at the end of each section, you it tells you what stitches are in each section. And then um, at the end of each section, it doesn't tell you here, but the at the end of each section, you'll get a uh, a project that kind of encompasses some of these stitches. Okay. So the first part of it, and of course you've got your, your title pages and the front, you know, what some of the project pictures look like inside. Oh, Interweave is the publisher. So Interweave is the publisher. All right, you got your table of contents here, which tells you where to go. And here it does tell you this one project for this the spring is Emmy's pillow. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's at the the very first section here. It says an introduction to texture crochet. I did look through this. I didn't realize this was a, a different section. So it does this with some basic stitches that are, I guess, universal throughout the year. So you've got your bobble, your popcorn. Um, your single crochet cluster stitch, your double crochet cluster stitch, your treble cl crochet cluster stitch, a puff stitch, a shell stitch, and a pico stitch. I love, I love, love, love using a pico stitch as a dainty edging around like baby blankets or smaller projects, say like a coaster. In fact, I'll link that up here above, but I have a coaster video that uses a similar pico, so something similar to the pico stitch to do the edging around it. All right, and then you go in, and, and, and there's a project at the end of with those stitches. Um, and then you have spring, and it has a shawl for the spring stitches. And I, I'll, I will read all of them. Um, you have the summer, and it, and it even has the ice cream cone stitch. I know you guys have seen that if you've looked on Pinterest. Um, and, of course, the project at the end, and using the ice cream cone stitch. Uh, fall, winter, and then the index and credits. Okay, now at the beginning, it talks to you about the book and how to get started. So it's going to be your basic, here it's going to talk to you about the different yarns and how it's going to look with, uh, with texture stitching. Some yarns lend themselves a lot better visibly to textured stitching 
Variegated is not one of them unless it's a very heavy texture. Um, all right, and then um, and then it just talks to you about the importance of gauge blocking and the types of blocking. All right, and then if you're doing swatches the same size, this blocking comes really well into play, and you can make a textured blanket with all of uh, all of these stitch swatches that you do. Here they talk about the different hooks and the ones they love, what their favorite hooks and why they love them. Right here is pictured. If anybody knows furled hooks, you know exactly what these are. These are furled hooks. And they talk about metal hooks, acrylic or resin hooks, and um, wooden hooks, and the difference between the three. All right, so an introduction to textured crochet. I, I would love to feel these. I love textured crochet. Do you guys love textured crochet? Let me know down below what you think of textured crochet. And do you like like this one, which is a very prominent and heavy texture, or do you like something a little bit more subtle like this? Um, let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I think there's a place for all of it. So, while we get into the meat of each swatch description, this one talks to you about the stitch itself. Okay, and honestly, you guys know that textured stitches are really just a common a combination of your basic stitches created in a way to make a particular texture. So. Here it talks to you about any uh, abbreviations you're going to need to know about this particular stitch. And here it talks to you about this pattern and how to make this particular swatch. Okay? And here it gives you the diagram. So I love that it's showing you what a bobble stitch looks like in the diagram. Okay? And then it tells you, you know, you repeat from here to here. So it's a, this is a wonderful. Um, a little diagram, pictorial diagram, along with the written instructions. Now, I do know, and here's some pictures that help you understand how to make the bobble stitch itself. So you have to yarn over, yarn over, and and there's a there's a and pull through. I think you have to. I actually have not made a bobble stitch that, lately, so I'd have to look at that. But it does have some pictures showing you how to make those stitches which is uh, wonderful. I think this is a great instructional piece. I love the color photos and um, and then the fact that they have both types of instructions with some pictures showing you how to do this new stitch which is wonderful. And they go through all of these. All, all of these are set up pretty much the same and um, I'm not going to bore you to death. But then they get into the project. I have to be careful. I can't show the whole project only because it's not my mind to share, but they talk about Project Emmy's pillow. They give you a little background behind it, and then um, they tell you what yarn they used, and they even tell you specifically what yarn. So we crochet yarn is what they use for this, um, which is a 50% merino wool, 25% baby alpaca, and 25% mulberry, and it is. 3.75 millimeter. I'd have to look up that that particular We Crochet Paragon. Oh, it's sport weight, so it's a two weight. So, um, I believe, yeah, two weight. DK is three. So, um, yeah, uh, you could probably substitute it if you want, or if you want to go with this exact and have it look exactly like this, then go and find that particular yarn. So, I do like that they put in the brand and not just the weight of what they use. Um, Again, just like with your stitch instructions, it tells you special abbreviations that you need to understand, like yarn over, chain, single crochet, double crochet. And then the special t stitches that they use are popcorn, spike shell, and spike DC. Now, I think they go through and describe those because I don't think they have that listed as a textured crochet. The only textured crochet you're going to use in that particular project is the popcorn. And no, they do, it's all puff shell, but they go through individually how to do the spike. Um, and, and whenever they do the descriptions in here. Anyway, so then they, then they go into the spring. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That too. They go into the spring textured stitches, which I really, look at that rose. How pretty is that? Or you have leaves. Uh, this is the bullion stitch. 
and the lilac stitch branches. Look how neat that looks. <laughs> the butterfly stitch. I thought that was flowers, but yeah, I guess that is butterflies, right? Alright, and then um, spring cable. I, and you know, you go through all this. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything, but then, then you have um, the project for this particular shawl that you can make. So, and I honestly, if you wanted to adjust it to be a little bit wider shawl, you just repeat, you know, say double it, double up the whole thing. And then you just double up the yarn. Um, and the, the, in this one, they used a DK weight. So it's the Montana cr Crochet DK weight yarn. 100% merino. Um, they've got some expensive taste. But you know what? When you're making beautiful things, merino is a beautiful yarn to use. Uh, and they use three hanks of Charmed. Um, but it's a three weight. It doesn't give you the... F oh, it's 231 yards. They use three hanks. So they used um, almost 700 yards. So that's something good to know if you just want to you want to pull out some three weight yarn out of your sash, and of course they have the inset with the abbreviations. So, um, so that is everything that's included in this book. There's the ice cream um, stitch. Look at that strawberry stitch. These are awesome, aren't they? What is this one? Rose stitch. Like lattice work here, or it's a diamond waffle stitch. I, I call lattice work, but you say it's summer cable, modified puff, and then there's the project. It's the um, the bag here, ice cream bag. Um, and then we're gonna flip through real quick with the fall stitches. Just kind of flip through. basket weave. I think Ginger's got a video here that um, that describes how to do a basket weave. Um, I don't know if I did, ever did a stitch study on it, but um, it, whichever way, I'll have something linked up above a uh, video for the basket weave. Look at the loose leaves. Oh, I love that. This is fall. Hound's tooth. That would make a beautiful pillow, don't you think? Oh, is that an acorn? Oh, a coffee cup stitch. How funny is that? That is not what that looked like whenever I looked at that. Not to me. Is that a coffee cup? Alright, we'll go with coffee cup. <laughs> I was thinking acorn. Did not think coffee cup in my mind. And then they have a nice Carla Fall cowl, but it's a, it's a basket weave cowl. And it's a nice tight cowl. It's not um, super loose, so keep your neck nice and warm. And then here's some of the stitches for the winter. And the project for the winter, I'm just going to show you that real quick. It is an Aurora Frosted Beanie. Aurora Frosted Beanie. Now one thing I wanted to check and I did not look at when I was looking at this. Take a look at these first stitch, um, stitch instructions. Okay, so they don't tell you she doesn't tell you what um, what weight yarn to use. You so that's up to you. Whatever weight you want to use, if you're more comfortable with a four weight, then use that. But if you want to kind of put all of these squares together that you create, then you want to make sure that you use the same yarn. And I would even go with the same brand of yarn. And each um, you can get away with it if you don't use the same brand of yarn. You can film, see, make sure they're some they're the same. Not all yarns describe their yarn size the same. Let's put it that way. But, um, yeah, just make sure you use the so that all of these can fit together if you wanted to put them together for a blanket. Okay, so just remember to do that. And uh, that is the gist of this book. It's not, it's not the meatiest of books, but it is a great book for what it is, honestly. I love that it has... It's not just a stitch book. It does have, it's a great book for what it is. It's just your, your textured stitches showing you how to get them done, how to put them together into a project. I do love that they have some full project, uh, you know, patterns in here so that you can see how to get that done and see how these pieces work together. Um, again, I think this is a great little book for just over $13. 
totally worth it. How many stars would I give it? I'd give it, I'd give it, let's go with um, a four out of five. And the only reason why I'm not giving it any higher than that is because I feel like when you do projects in these, um, uh, I, I really feel like you need to maybe use a more common weight. Um, the four, the four weight and find projects in the four weight instead of the smaller weights. Um, especially as people are learning, but that's just my personal opinion. It's just something that I think that, um, it just that, that people should do. And then as you start to get into more, um, intricate stuff and you're not doing these stitch study books, okay, use all sorts of different weights. That sounds wonderful. But when you're doing stitch study books, I feel like you should use the weights. Um, you know, use a four weight or standard, you're more, more of a standard size yarn. Okay. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go down below and hit that thumbs up button. And while you're down there, if you like all things yarn and crochet, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so that you're reminded each time I come out with a brand new video. While you're down there, give me a little comment. Let me know what, what are you excited to try out? Does this book look like something you would get? Um, and again, if this, if you are interested in purchasing this book, it is linked down below. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. You have an amazing day. Bye-bye.